Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Grade Up. I hope you all are doing really well. Through the course of this lecture, we would cover some very important poems which are extremely crucial from your poetry aspect. And remember, whenever Hello we are so welcome sorry. Right. And whenever we are discussing, whenever we are talking about the importance of your poetry unit, you must keep in mind that, you know, your poetry is a, one of your most important units in terms of the number of questions. So there was a question that one of the uh, aspirants had asked that, you know, how many questions can we expect per unit? So it's a hard reality that unfortunately, when we are talking about your paper, you must remember that there will be multiple questions that will be asked from these four units that you're having. That includes your poetry, that includes your drama, that includes your your non-fictional prose writing that's unit four and then your unit three also fiction short stories so you must be fully prepared about all these aspects okay so let's very very quickly dive into the discussion and towards the end today we have swapped the method in which we conduct the classes towards the end of the session we will be having a short quiz or uh, perhaps in between if you will be uh, losing momentum or you'll be losing uh, your concentration even though there are a bunch of really crucially uh, selective poems that i've got at the beginning there very fun interesting poems like for example you can tell me who has written Miss Sisyphus so Miss Sisyphus is a poem that's been written by one of the very prominent writers who was writing during the 20th century and uh, she was also one of the first important uh, like you know woman poet laureate that uh, England had and you also have poet laureates now coming in America so certain concepts also in between will keep on completing or uh, related to your poetry and remember you get questions from poetry not just from the poems and the major works of the poets but also from important movements in poetry you get questions related to uh, any type of writing that is central or any particular stanza form that a poet is inventing any new style for which the poet is actually recognized for so you know there are multiple ways through which questions from poetry are coming it's just not a poem and a work but much more than that that gets added that you have to understand okay so let's very very quickly dive into today's interesting session and like i said we'll have quiz towards the end but for First, we will discuss some important poems that are crucial from the poetry unit. It's one of the most interesting units because, you know, unfortunately, now novel has become a much more popular form, but poetry used to be a vehicle, one of the oldest forms of writing, one of the oldest forms of literature, so to say, has been poetry. But of course, now the novel, uh, ever since the novel became popular, it has retained its eminence, but still we shouldn't really forget the importance of the other genres and also not forget the importance of genres like poetry uh, feel free to connect on the telegram channel it's Nietzsche UGC net English uh, you will get all the PDFs all the updates uh, so today for example we've started from today onwards the special uh, webisodes so to say you can call them webisodes you can call them short videos whatever you want to call them right and these webisodes are like episodes important uh, like you know nuggets that we'll be giving you on uh, important topics we'll be questioning uh, practicing questions also uh, so of course there will be live sessions but besides the live sessions you will also have certain pre-recorded uh, versions which will be made available to you so that you can check it you can view them as per your convenience and all the links will be provided on the telegram channel so please feel free to connect via the telegram platform let's see how many of you have joined at the classroom platform let's very very quickly see how many of you know uh, but she albert kumu jyoti prakash is writing uh, like you know albert kumu is writing the myth of sisyphus but miss sisyphus is written by carol ann duffy we will just talk about that okay uh, hi shashi hi Hi Navika, hi Ken Singh, hi Pagashri, hi Jyotsna, Amol, Jyoti Prakash, uh, Kushbu, there's Ananya Datta, there's Jamila, Parvinder, Sneha, Swati, Dhenu. Good evening everyone, good evening, keep on joining. And over here I can see uh, some of you who have joined. Uh, uh, there is Jigyasa, I'm doing good Jigyasa, thanks so much for asking. There's Munman, Payal, Hetal. Good evening, Hetal. I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Sana, Hamida, Vishal, Sabita, Supriya, Ima, Akarshan, Rabia, Jigyasa. Uh, there's Priyanka, there's Rupa, Poonam, uh, Lidji, Shruti, Raja, Abdul, uh, Shib. Shibi, what is your question, Bachi? What is your question? Uh, hi, Tulika. Uh, hi, Saurabh. Uh, Shibi, what is your question? <laughs> Happy festive season to everyone. Thank you, Payal, for wishing. Happy festive season. Hi, Suman. Hi, uh, Ayan. Okay. 
good evening good evening uh shibi what is your question along with a question please put the question also because i can't see your question anyway let's very very hi saila hi uh avnish avnish is also very hard working all right so let's very very quickly get started good evening kiran good evening let's get started with your important poems the first important one we've taken from ben johnson now predominantly we know ben johnson as the writer who's very famous for inventing the comedy of humors we know ben johnson as a writer who's also predominantly writing two important tragedies sejanus and catelyn these questions come directly but we must also remember that he's also known for short lyrical poems that he's writing and a lot of times you know they give you these minor poems for example you get the poetry written by thomas hardy or you get the poetry written by rudyard kipling because you know these writers we've accepted them <clears throat> for writing other things but you must remember that these writers are also engaging in writing poetry these writers are also trying to write and trying to pen down poetry and we must not forget their poetic works we must not forget their poetic works which are also crucial for our analysis so song to cecilia is written by ben johnson it is a love lyric poem it is a love lyric poem it's presenting the love of the poet right that the poet is having for his beloved prior to this there was actually a courtly love tradition that was being followed in the during the elizabethan times the courtly love tradition would actually idealize the beloved and sir philip sidney one of your silver poets was a clear cut example of such kind of poetry right and please remember when we are writing dejection in love what is dejection in love so you know there is something which is called as your unrequited love what do we mean by unrequited unrequited means unfulfilled love love that does not culminates into marriage it's obviously very different from the love that you guys have you guys as gen z have which you know these people were very particular and for them the true complete uh, version or the com- true complete fulfillment of love could only be achieved with the lovers uniting together otherwise it was an example of unrequited love otherwise it became an example of unrequited love that we could see so song to celia is written by ben johnson this is a work by ben johnson i am so sorry all my gadgets today are on like you know all right yeah so so these all works that you are able to see so for example when we are talking about song to uh, talk to uh, song to celia song to celia is a love lyric poem written by ben johnson it's a love lyric poem uh, written by ben johnson which is talking about dejection in love right uh, so a lot of writers actually continue with the theme and remember dejection is a very important poetic theme remember dejection and ode written by samuel taylor coleridge which is talking about a different aspect of dejection but it's a very common theme it's a very central theme in poetry tradition which you have to keep on analyzing right and what you have to keep in mind is that you know this particular work and 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 here you can actually compare a lot of your other important writers also uh, during the modern times who are trying to follow a similar form of writing you know so that was of course there this is telling you about a person's feeling a person's feeling for a person whom he really adores he really likes he really is in love he's infatuated badly right you can see that there is a uh, there's this element of pining in love there's this element in, in, in like you know so mostly courtly love tradition was talking about a beloved who was not achievable you could not really get through her it was unrequited love and you were just pining you were just pining in love compare it with as you like it and compare it with the character of rocks or compare it with the character of orlando also to uh, to begin with right so you know as you like it was also having these elements that you know people are pining for their uh, uh, for their beloved the beloveds are not coming they are uh, inapproachable so to say so you could actually see these themes which were coming in you were able to see these themes which are very very common right and in the end it proved to be an unfruit it uh, it proved to be unfruitful as rosy wreath sent as a gift to the love was returned to the poet a rosy wreath the rosy wreath so you know the the, the kind of a ring that was re- returned back to the poet so clearly getting dejected so song to celia song to celia by ben johnson is giving us an important prototype of writings uh, poetry writings and remember that is the reason the early 17th century poets some of them are also so you've got spenserians you've got cavaliers and the cavaliers during the early 17th century were a brand of poets who were actually imitating ben johnson they were actually imitating ben johnson 
all right and here you can see that the poet actually begins the poem is beginning with the speaker trying to say drink to me right drink to me with thine eyes so that is how the the, the work actually begins most very popular lines that you're having so please do remember i'll just hide myself over here so that you're able to see this so please do keep this in mind that whenever we are talking about poetry traditions of the time this is also an important uh, work of writing that you have to keep in mind right this is also an important poem that you have to keep in mind all right do make a connections do make connections here we are of course looking at poetry the most important poems that are coming in but you guys should not forget that you know you have to make connections while you are looking at these poems while you are looking at these poems it's always a good idea to make connection okay so this is literally telling you about the courtly love tradition this is literally telling you how poets are actually writing these kind of poetry which are becoming very popular now mrs sisyphus mrs sisyphus is a poem written by carol and duffy who is carol and duffy carol and duffy was the poet laureate uh, of united kingdom she was the first woman as well as the first lesbian poet laureate in united kingdom and carol and duffy is writing multiple works she is writing multiple works one such work which is very important is mrs sisyphus she's saying everyone talks about mr sisyphus albert camu the nobel prize winner winner writer has also spoken about albert camu also talks about the myth of sisyphus the essay which is so important for your absurd literature what is the myth of sisyphus sisyphus was a greek myth in which sisyphus has been condemned to roll a stone up the mountain and the stone comes down the stone comes down right and when we are talking about the myth of sisyphus what we must remember what we must keep in mind is the fact that whenever we are discussing about the myth of sisyphus we are forgetting what about his family he is totally engaged he is totally engaged of course we've said that you know sisyphus is actually symbolic of the modern man the modern man is also toiling in a similar fashion but what about his wife what about his wife no one's talking about his wife right no one's talking about his wife so that is what we come to know that is what we come to know when we are talking about the miss um, uh, like you know when we are talking about mrs sisyphus mrs sisyphus is a work by carol and duffy it's a work by carol and duffy it is a work in which we are able to see that sisyphus's wife and her pain is being presented because you know he is engaged he is engaged he is engaged but his wife is actually suffering in loneliness the wife is companionless the wife is not having anyone to really celebrate the moments of uh, like you know the moments that she is undergoing as as a uh, as an individual right and you are able to see that you know he is dedicated to his work but he is he is forgotten completely about his wife he is completely forgotten about uh, his wife's happiness about the wife's freedom and that is what carol and duffy is talking about that you know these works were absolutely silent about the women compare this with the writer ad hope ad hope is also writing book of answers alec duick hope ad hope is an australian poet and he is writing the book of answers which is actually giving you like you know which is telling you the reply of to his coy mistress so book of answers is written by ad hope book of answers is a work that is written by ad hope that you are able to see which is written by ad hope so compare you know these writers are looking at mainstream works they're looking at important works and they're trying to question that what about the voices of women what about the voices of women why were they not really being spoken about or the silent women characters why no one's talking about them why no one is talking about the silent women characters so sorry right yes absolutely that's true okay uh, yes akarshan absolutely uh, when we're talking about sappho sappho is also an important writer that we have so mrs sisyphus is a work by carol and duffy mrs sisyphus is a work by carol and duffy and this particular work is trying to talk about how this husband is completely ignorant and oblivious about what the wife is feeling it is trying to give us it is trying to tell us about the fact that what about wives no one's talking about the wives compare this i want you to compare this also with euripides euripides the classical greek tragedy writer is also talk talking about trojan women he says that okay everyone has spoken about look at that in earlier times also euripides had the wisdom euripides is saying euripides is writing works like media euripides is writing works like trojan women he is writing works like electra hecuba he is talking about the fact that everyone is talking about the trojan war but no one is talking about the women 
Whereas, if you look at Homer, Homer in his The Iliad, chapter six, talks about Hector and Andromache. Homer, for example, if you look at Homer's Iliad, chapter six, he's talking about women. He's talking about Andromache. Who was Andromache? Andromache was Hector's wife. Andromache was Hector's wife. So Homer is definitely giving voice to the women. And according to Homer, it's not because of Helen that the war was actually taking place. It wasn't because of Helen. It was because of the men and their decisions it was because of the men and their decisions that the war was taking place so you're clearly able to see when you're looking at writers like Homer, when you're looking at writers like Euripides, they're very particular in making sure that they're giving representation to women. Right. And that's exactly what Carol and Duffy is also doing. And that's exactly what writers like A.D. Hope are also doing. Please keep all these aspects properly in mind. They're all important for you. You need to revise these things right now. Now is the time. So, for example, you can get a question on A.D. Hope or you can get a question related to Australian poetry. You can get a question related to cl classical drama. So either you can get a, uh, like, you know, a, a work of Euripides, Ascalis or Sophocles. So you need to make connections at this juncture and prepare your studies. That is most significant at this juncture. That is most crucial and critical at this juncture. Right. So the poem is beginning Mrs. Sisyphus by Carol Ann Duffy. It begins with the speaker. The speaker is Sisyphus's wife. You are giving agency to women. You are giving importance to women. It is reminding the readers about the struggle of her husband. Yes, my struggle is Mr. Sisyphus. He's engaged in a lot of problems. And she, she says that, you know, it's absolutely absurd that he's engaged in such kind of tasks. Her husband is still determined. You know, everyone so far had looked at the myth of Sisyphus as representing modern times where all of us are just doing work without any sort of, uh, like, you know, outcome. It's a repetitive work. We get up in the morning, we go out, we are, uh, like, you know, getting back to work. But no one is actually thinking about the determination that each one of us exhibits. Even if you're doing repetitive work, there is determination. So that is another aspect that she's getting. There's another aspect that we're able to see in Mrs. Sisyphus. She thinks that, you know, he's absolutely, she says he's a jerk, he's a burk for his stubbornness. He's absolutely stubborn. He's crazy that he's doing the same stuff again and again. And he's not able to accept defeat. He's not able to accept defeat. He's not understanding that it's not reaping any product. It's an unimpactful work. So imagine a woman is able to see the hollowness, the shallowness of a man's world in the 20th century. The 20th century, remember, uh, people, feminism is questioning, was a world that engaged in wars, was a world that was man-made in a way, right? All our natural disasters are there, but we also have man-made disasters. But women didn't really have a very critical role in the decision-making process. That is what we are asking. That is what we're asking. That is fantastic if you're putting it down on an A4 size sheet. Again, very important, The Passionate Shepherd by Christopher Marlowe. So, you know, these important poets uh, who are uh, not important poets, I would say, these novelists who are actually crucial, but they're not being asked. They are not being asked. Why are they not being asked? They're not being asked because of the fact that uh, they are uh, writing poetry, which is very, uh, you, you can say that's not very popular. For example, Marlowe is extremely popular for the tragedies that he's written. We know him for Dido, the Queen of Carthage, for Tamberlin. We know him for writing uh, plays which are so important like Dr. Faustus, right? Or, or the, the Massacre at Paris. But we are not knowing that, you know, there are important poetry also that can be asked from uh, Christopher Marlowe. There, there are important works of poems that he's writing which can be asked that we need to be aware about. That we must truly think and we must truly be aware about. Okay, so please keep that in mind. Please remember that that is really cre uh, that's genuinely very important for all of you to remember. All right. Now here when we are talking about here when we are talking about the passionate shepherd here when we are talking about the passionate shepherd, the passionate shepherd is actually a work which is having six stanzas right and what can we see what can we see the poet has chosen to utilize this rhyming scheme this rhyming scheme is definitely there and you know when you talk about the poetic works of uh, Christopher Marlowe one of course like you know Chapman is helping us to complete Hero and Leander but what you are able to see for example when you talk about the Passionate Shepherd the Passionate Shepherd was also an extremely important work written by Marlowe that you all must be aware about because you know this, this kind of question comes in the um, uh, for example you know Passion Shepherd to His Love or the poetic works of Shakespeare. These are things that are coming recurrently to you. All right. The passionate shepherd to his love uh, is having a very, very popular first line. Come live with me and be my love. Come live with me and be my love. 
very popular first lines come live with me and be my love so literally telling that you know ultimately the the lover is trying to request the beloved to come and cohabit with the beloved or with the lover the cohabiting part becomes important the cohabiting part is actually crucial for your understanding that is what you are able to see in the passionate shepherd to his love right the poem the poem is actually getting published years later after his death but what you are able to see it's also a love poem it's also a love poem many people consider it to be an example of a pastoral style love lyric it's a pastoral style love lyric all right and you are able to see that you know uh, the the poem was being written in a tradition that was being followed during the elizabethan times passionate shepherd pastoral tradition was a tradition that a lot of elizabethan writers are writing pastoral love lyrics pastoral love lyrics were becoming extremely important many many writers were actually experimenting with such forms of writing many writers were actually talking about such kind of writings you were able to see that so please keep that in mind that you know sometimes so come live with me and be my love and uh, we will all the pleasures prove etc etc it keeps on going it's a beautiful uh, poem that you can actually uh, read also it's very short very brief very crisp very concise to the point so that you get an idea of the kind of love lyric poems that were written during the victorian period the love lyric poems that were possibly there during the victorian period okay so please remember that okay please remember that that is crucial from your examination perspective that you have to follow the poem is actually starting with the speaker asking his lover to come and be with him forever come be and like you know come be my love and like you know he's basically asking her to stay go habit that's a simple pleasure that's a simple pleasure that you're able to see extremely important christina rossetti a part of the pre raphaelite brotherhood writing goblin market the goblin market was another important work now what is so special about the goblin market it's also a little feminist in nature you don't have men you're only having little elf like men's dwarfs which are there in the form of men men are not there there's lizzy and laura the world of two sisters she's celebrating sisterhood even though christina rossetti was considered to be a writer who was writing for children but clearly what you're able to see over here there is a celebration of sisterhood clearly there is a celebration of sisterhood okay so please remember this aspect please keep that in mind uh, these are all important they're all significant i i don't really think there'll be a lot of doubts per se uh, but yes please keep on remembering please keep on remembering these as and when you're watching this uh, try to recollect because you never know one such poem if it's coming it'll always help and benefit you in a way okay so the goblin market what is the goblin market talking about the goblin market is discussing about the theme of sisterhood it is telling you about the kingdom of lizzy and laura where of course uh, there is a sister who commits a crime she falls in love uh, she falls for temptation but at the same time there's another woman who's prudent to protect her there's another woman who's ready to protect her and remember the pre raphaelite brotherhood also called the fleshly school of poets right the pre raphaelite brotherhood were a form of uh, like you know a group of poets who were there wherein they were also called uh, like you know painter poets who were drawing their paintings and they were writing poetry on the basis of their paintings so you could clearly see that comparison being made those important ideas that were coming together so goblin market goblin market right goblin market is of course a very important work that was written by christina rossetti and here you are able to see that you know it is actually letting us it is trying to help us get into this world where you have two sisters and one sister is getting tempted one sister is actually getting tempted so that is what you are able to see in the goblin market this is one such aspect that is taking place in the goblin market that you must remember work of christina rossetti right and here what are you able to see what are you able to see that you know what are of course the the important themes are being presented women's desire is also getting highlighted right but most importantly an aspect that you have to keep in mind which is really important for the goblin market lizzy and laura lizzy and laura the two sisters that were having you are able to see that they are being tempted by the goblin merchants the goblin merchants they are merchants so element of capitalism is also coming in there is an element of capitalism also that you are able to see right and what you are able to see is how uh, ultimately there is this entire notion of women's solidarity but also women's desire so you know that links back to eve committing that temptation so uh, a lot of people complain about uh, like you know women like eve women like helen of troy but 
but you know if you genuinely see these historical writings if you see them in other perspective you come to know that they were not as much perpetuators so to say they were just victims of temptation and many men have also fallen trap of the temptation so why is female desire considered to be bad that is what the work is also trying to talk about many people have interpreted the work in multiple ways it's been interpreted in multiple multiple ways there's a beautiful interpretation given in the ignu books also you can actually read that it's a good attempt to you know go over it but please remember that you know these pre raphaelite brotherhood all the members are equally important we we were speaking about william morris's no, news from nowhere which is an example of utopian writing or for example when you talk about the blessed damsel written by dg rossetti dante gabriel rossetti that you have to keep in mind okay so how you know you are able to see that laura and lissy they hear the sound of the goblin fruit market uh, like you know the, the goblin fruit market they can hear the sound uh, just like you know you hear the sounds of people like okay kulfi le lo kabadi wala or something like that so you are able to hear the sound as well and they try to they try to ignore they try to ignore these sounds right uh, but eventually we see that laura decides to go and see what's happening lizzy tells her lizzy is also telling her don't go lizzy is telling her but you know laura is too curious and uh, laura ultimately cannot really withhold her curiosity and she's not having any money so laura is not having any money but the goblins offer her okay they say okay fine we will take your golden hair we'll take your golden hair you can take it you can take uh, these fruits that we are having so laura gives up her hair because you know she wants to take that goblin fruit so lizzy is actually the voice so lizzy l i i i stands for intelligence lizzy is already told laura that don't fall trap don't fall trap and laura is really naive she is not able to understand that despite the fact that she is not having money why are the goblins giving her the fruit why are the goblins giving her the fruit so you know it's like a childhood fable so she was also christina rosetti was also considered to be a writer of children she was considered to be a writer of children so to say okay uh, so so do keep all these aspects properly in mind of course at the end you are able to see that you know the the kind of defeat of the goblins but but still there are certain important themes that are getting highlighted over here even in that simplistic story that we are able to see even in that simple story that we are able to see we're actually looking at this narrative poem being uh, it's it's significantly useful for a feminist reading also we are able to see that you know feminist reading is also possible all right and and do remember it's one of the longest write, written works of christina rosetti because it's almost almost having more than 500 lines 567 lines a narrative poem telling us the entire story that we have that how the sinister group of goblin merchants they are goblin merchants i'm again and again highlighting the fact right and how the sister laura is actually getting captivated she's getting enchanted just like eve was enchanted by satan who was disguised as a serpent even he was able to like you know literally take care of uh, eve so uh, or uh, like he was also in he was also able to tempt eve into possibly like you know agreeing to whatever he had so that is what you are able to see so goblin market is of course an important work that you have to remember the first lines that are there in the goblin market the poet describes the calls and the cries of the goblin men how the goblin men are calling the goblin men are calling right and lizzy is able to see lizzy is the wiser one lizzy is able to see lizzy is much more wiser she even tells laura that stay away from them but laura ignores the warning laura is not like you know she's so excited that she ignores the warning and she pays for one of the fruit with the lock of her hair and once she eats it she's addicted to the taste she's becoming addicted to the taste so you know that is what you are ultimately able to see that is what you are able to see ultimately extremely important writer county cullen county cullen a poet of importance writing the poem hey black child hey black child county cullen county cullen is one of your most important uh, whenever we are talking about your 20th century writing so i hope classroom students you are able to remember that today remember we looked at three important uh, three important works that were written by maya angelo we spoke about mom and me and mom we spoke about like you know traveling shoes right so traveling shoes is another autobiography written by maya angelo and of course i know the caged bird sings that's also an autobiographical work so remember we discussed about three important non fictional works of maya angelo and we said that maya angelo was an important voice for the afro american community the same thing you have to remember the same thing you have to keep in mind for county cullen as well county cullen is also offering you the same important uh, like you know important analysis so to 
say so you have to remember about county cullen as well please remember this about county cullen also okay so these are certain things about county cullen that you have to keep in mind and what you are able to see hey black child is trying to talk to all the black children all the black children who have been taught by the world that their lives can't amount to anything there was a link that i had shared at the telegram channel a couple of uh, days ago uh, of gugiwa thiongo giving the speech so gugiwa thiongo says that you know he was alarmed when he went back uh, to his uh, hometown and he saw that you know he was being fined children were being fined for using native language if they were using native language they were getting fined they were getting fined so county cullen hey black child county cullen is writing hey black child and in this hey black child what is he telling us about in this particular work he's telling us about the fact that you know uh, that that ultimately black children have also understood that they are uh, they are uh, inferior but that is what he wants to break he wants to break this myth he's saying no you people are competent it's not that you're incompetent you guys are competent to create your careers you guys are competent to shape your destinies you guys are competent to change the nature of your identity so don't think this ways don't think this ways so county cullen writing hey black child hey black child is a work that is written by county cullen all right is a work that is written by by county cullen this is a poem that is telling the black people that don't consider yourself to be inferior don't consider yourself to be inferior it is using repetition to emphasize tell the child over and over again that they are strong and capable of anything that they want to do it is trying to tell them that you know they have misunderstood the world has tried to misunderstand or misinform them that the blacks are actually incapable whereas the blacks are capable all right whereas the blacks are actually capable the poem concludes by alluding to the future that is different from the poet's contemporary present it's very different from the poet's contemporary present he says that you know my present unfortunately had these hierarchies but your future holds promise of equality he's also saying and that is only possible if you guys agree and understand that you're not you're not inferior in any way you're not inferior in any way if you guys understand this that you're not inferior in any way only then only then we would we be able to like you know change our histories compare this with the idea of uh, like you know nelson mandela nelson mandela also had the idea of rainbow nation an equal society where all the people of different colors actually coexist and co-inhabit together they are coexisting and co-inhabiting together that is what you are able to see that is what you are able to see in the concept of the rainbow nation as well the concept of the rainbow nation is also offering us similar insights that is what you have to keep in mind those are important aspects that you must remember <coughs> So sorry, I was just hunting for a tissue. Okay, yeah, I finally found one. All right. So these are certain aspects. These are certain aspects that you must keep in mind. That you know, these black writers are always trying to write so that they can change their society. They can change. They are very socially committed writers. African writers, Afro American writers, black writers, Negro writers, whatever you wish to call them. And remember, in the morning, uh, sorry, in the afternoon class, classroom students, we said that they are rebellion revolutionists. Maya Angelou calls themselves as rebellion revolutionists because when Maya Angelou was going back to Ghana she couldn't really find anything over there also so she said we need to rebel we need to tell the black people not to think that they are inferior in any which way so county cullen county cullen is also very important and the poems of these black writers as it is they're very very important they're crucial dg rossetti the blessed damsel the blessed damsel is a beautiful work you know a lot of times we are th- talking about endymion by keats telling you about like you know the entire uh, love affair between someone who's like an angelic or like you know an angel and someone who's a human but the blessed damsel is a beautiful work the blessed damsel is saying usually what is happening is that the humans are falling in love with the moon or like you know the angels but here actually the blessed damsel is looking you know she's just literally looking from the clouds beneath and she's falling in love with a human so it's not that you know the people uh, in the heaven are having a very interesting life it's not that people in heaven are also having a very very interesting life so we're getting a completely opposite perspective in the blessed damsel in the blessed damsel that is what you have to remember right that is what you have to keep in mind
so sorry right so the blessed damsel by dante gabriella rossetti by dg rossetti this particular work what are you able to see in the blessed damsel what are you able to experience what are you able to see in the blessed damsel the blessed damsel is trying to tell you about this entire journey of how this blessed damsel is actually falling in love with an earthly creature and there was also like you know a painting that was made because dante gabriella rossetti was a pre-raphaelite brotherhood and remember pre-raphaelite brotherhood was influencing aestheticism aestheticism was indeed influencing new criticism also in a way and it was also getting inspired by symbolism that was important that was crucial for all of you to remember all right emily dickinson is a very important poet and emily dickinson she's written multiple poems right uh, for example uh, she's also talking about success is counter sweetest by those who never succeed much madness is divinest sense much madness is divinest sense is also one such works her works were published in fragments so two important poets of the 19th century american tradition that you have to keep in mind one is of course walt whitman walt whitman becomes important there were your brahma poets or boston brahmins also who are famously called as the fireside poets then there were transcendental poets uh, emerson was writing brahma for example or the sage of concord um uh, sorry i'm saying the sage of concord him uh, him uh, him to concord so those were the two poems that emerson was also writing but when you talk about about 19th century poetry it's predominantly emily dickinson as well as walt whitman who are important for you uh, and along with that of course you've got your fireside poets there are questions that come directly fireside group of poets are also called boston brahmins they, why are they called boston brahmins they called brahmins because they were able to have access to sanskrit learning and knowledge they had access to sanskrit learning and knowledge okay that is what you're able to see and here much madness is divinest sense is telling us you know it is a poem it is a work and uh, and definitely like you know she was dealing with melancholic themes of course this poem is dealing with the theme of madness and sanity society conformity that society only teaches you to conform society is ultimately emily dickinson's impact of her father is also being presented over here that you know society is predominantly society is predominantly only and only concerned about conformity society is genuinely only looking at the fact that you know it wants amiable uh, subjects that is exactly what your marxist critics are also talking about Marxist critics are saying that you know why the same order has repeated itself again and again the same order has repeated itself again and again that is because you know we've got good subjects the society has managed to get good subjects who are not at all questioning the authority they're not at all questioning the authority at all they're just conforming they're conforming to whatever is being told to them they are conforming to whatever has been told to them right uh, by the society so these are aspects that you have to keep in mind these are aspects that you must remember the past is such a curious creature beautiful lines again and a beautiful poem so you know her works are in fragments so the first line the first line actually becomes the title of the poem itself the first line actually becomes the title of the poem itself the past is such a curious creature by emily dickinson it's focusing on past and it personifies past as a female character the past is considered to be uh, is personified as a female character the past is such a curious creature right and you are able to you are able to find that you know even though there are few words written but they're very relatable words that's the kind of experience that we also have with past the element of regret that we have the element you know it's it's very uh, it's very crazy that of course we regret but why are we regretting why were we not clear about how to act at that time so past is a very curious creature suddenly we all become wise when we are looking at the past but when that past was a present emily dickinson was trying to make a point that you know we were not as intelligent to take our decisions at that time we were not as intelligent to take our decisions at that time Elizabeth Barrett Browning Elizabeth Barrett Browning is also an extremely important writer that you have to keep in mind remember after the death of William Wordsworth Samuel Rogers rejected poet laureate ship and it was believed that Elizabeth Barrett Browning should have got the poet laureate ship but she was not given the poet laureate ship she was known for her courtship period with Robert Browning who was younger to her and Robert Browning knew the fact that you know she was about to die she was actually plagued with illness but still they had a very passionate uh, love relationship 
and a lot of people have written about them also a lot of people have written about them also all right i'll try to share some notes also related to that how do i love thee how do i love thee let me count the ways let me count the ways sonnet 43 one of robert browning's most famous poems one of robert browning's most famous poems you know uh, and, and and she was uh, sorry i'm saying robert browning one of elizabeth barrett browning's most famous poem how do i love thee let me count the ways sonnet 43 sonnets from like you know so she was uh, here when you're talking about sonnets from portuguese uh, it's it's actually telling us that how robert browning would call elizabeth barrett browning as my portchu my portchu was the nickname that he had given to her they were passionately in love everyone knew about their love and that is the reason robert browning after the death became very distressed and he was of course engaging in uh, becoming this pioneer dramatic monologue writer after the death of elizabeth barrett browning all right and she of course influenced many people uh, particularly emily dickinson also she uh, she went on to influence many many writers and poets uh, we are able to see that she is talking about she is talking about some important concerns uh, that we'll just be looking at um, you are able to see that you know they they of course secretly got married both of them got secretly married and uh, you know she was disinherited uh, elizabeth barrett browning they moved along with robert browning they moved to italy and she died in italy at the age of 55 she eventually succumbed to her illness and she passed away she passed away uh, but what you are able to see is the fact that you know her poetry is symbolic of a true victorian spirited poetry that even was so fascinating for virginia wolf that virginia wolf was also writing flush the novel written from the perspective of her dog and you know she herself elizabeth barrett browning herself had written about flush Elizabeth Barrett Browning had herself written about her dog Flush. She was herself writing about her dog Flush. That is something that you have to keep in mind. Very important the cry of the children, the cry of the children. It was first published in the Blackwoods magazine. It is telling us about the horrors that children actually face due to manual labor, the horrors that are faced by children. And you know, here you are able to see writers like Elizabeth Gaskell. Good evening, Shubina. Kalindi uh, all the details regarding the batches will be provided to you you can just cross check and call the helpline number once they'll clarify it okay so that is something that you have to remember absolutely simon absolutely absolutely very good very good uh, simon has given a beautiful interpretation simon from the youtube uh, from the classroom platform has given a very beautiful uh, interpretation uh, that is true that is true that lizzy is comparable to christ because of the fact that she is a savior of laura absolutely good evening good evening all right fantastic so let's continue so the cry of the children the cry of the children is telling us just like elizabeth gaskell was writing about it just like thomas carlyle were writing about the chartist movement about the working class movement, movement about the problems that people are facing right uh, for example william blake had already written about chimney sweepers charles lamp was also writing on chimney sweepers the essay that he was writing uh, so a lot of these people were actually talking about children being employed as manual laborers charles dickens also talks about it so you were able to see remember yesterday i had uh, given you optimist dot or today rather you you guys saw it today today there was a video that was uploaded on the pulitzer prize winning writer uh, wherein i had told you that the optimist's daughter the optimist's daughter is a story of uh, like you know how this woman is coming back to meet her father and uh, optimist's daughter is talking about the fact that you know how suddenly you are able to see that you know the father is unfortunately having a, a like you know a not so successful surgery and he dies but during this period she's trying to explore her personal life the optimist daughter is written by which writer i want you to answer all the people who have seen the pulitzer prize winning uh, a video that i've just shared it was shared on the telegram platform also it was included in your video related to pulitzer prize winning writers part 1 optimist daughter who is the writer who's the writer of optimist daughter who's the writer of optimist daughter who is the writer of the optimist daughter let's very quickly see how many of you are able to uh, have have all of you seen the video mm okay there are a lot of chats that are taking place good evening tabassum good evening Okay, Megha Seth is asking, what should be the routine to clear net in thirty days? What should be the routine that needs to be followed to clear net in thirty days? Where well, I would say, um, right, uh, 
see uh, when you're talking about mekha mekha see in the 30 days you should definitely focus on your previous year's questions try to practice as many questions as possible and i would say just keep on revising keep on revising whatever you are studying for example if today you've practiced a set of 50 questions and whatever questions you've got them wrong just make a small note of that and keep on revising it so just make notes uh, like you know start making notes now uh, and these notes eventually you can take it to your uh, like you know to your final exam that will be important excellent very good Seema Lakshmi have given the right answer Seema Lakshmi you've given the right answer uh, Edora Weltley is the right answer that is true that is true right so remember and, and we'll keep on uh, sharing these kind of videos now on a regular basis short videos longer videos important videos on certain important topics so it's always a good idea if you're aware about them okay all right great fantastic uh, okay Lichi is saying she'll see it in the evening Sibi Kingi, what is your question? Sibi, uh, start practicing questions. I would recommend that. Okay, start practicing mock test questions also. That will definitely help. That will definitely help. Uh, and along with that, of course, you know, I will ask you <laughs> two words when you when you come back from your paper or when you clear the exam, whether the video has helped or not. That should be a question that I should be asking you. Rather, you asking me this question. No, I find it very absurd and I'm not a marketer. I think if it benefits you, that is the reason you will watch them. If it's not benefiting you, why would you watch them, right? So I, I'm really bad at marketing, even though I know the principles of marketing marketing I can de de deliver a lecture on marketing marketing management uh, of Philip Kotlar I can give a lecture or a complete series on marketing research also um, so, so so that is of course there these are subjects that MBA students actually study but unfortunately when it comes to marketing myself I'm really bad at that so I would say that you know you should check it for your own self and see if they are benefiting you you should be here all right chalo. so please remember that that you know the horrors or that the children are facing that is getting uh, like you know that is getting advocated over here all right so please remember that you know as it is elizabeth barrett browning is very popular for uh, being a propagator of liberal causes liberal causes was something that was very dear to her you know link this to how a lot of your transcendental writers were also abolitionists you know a lot of these poets were genuinely concerned about social issues they were genuinely concerned about uh, your uh, right uh, they were genuinely not concerned about uh, Right now, uh, now when you're talking about when you're discussing about these, uh, so for example, a lot of your transcendental poets, right? A lot of your transcendental writers, they were also against slavery. So that means literature was actually making you awaken towards the problems of the times. You were be becoming very sensitive to these issues. Literature had that impact on you. You were becoming like you know, uh, not just amenable subjects who will just accept whatever the authority is telling you. You would genuinely want to go that extra mile. You would genuinely like to go that extra mile to question the authority figures to question the authority figures that is what is important all right uh, so that is something and and please remember you should remember that the epigraph of the work the epigraph of the work the cry of the children when we are talking about elizabeth barrett browning the cry of the children the cry of the children if you look at the epigraph of this work the epigraph of this work is actually coming from media the epigraph of this work is actually coming from media by Euripides. media by Euripides. Media is a tragedy written by Euripides wherein Euripides is presenting like, despite the fact that Media commits this crime of murdering her children but still Euripides presents her in a very sensitive light in a very very sensitive light. It's about a woman who murders her children but still we are not really against Media because Euripides has presented a very fascinating uh, account that you know it wasn't actually Media's fault it wasn't actually Media's fault as such she was jilted in love she was jilted in love that is what we come to know that is what you know basically we're we're looking at to flush my dog elizabeth barrett browning this is the main source because of what which virginia wolf is also writing about flush because of which virginia wolf is also writing about flush right suhu bohar jald bache we will let you know okay we will let you know we will definitely keep you in mind uh, we will uh, so that is the reason i'm telling you now is the time just activate your telegram channel ka wo, uh, like you know maybe at any time you know you will keep on you'll ke keep on getting a lot of material so we're working very very hard at the back end uh, to ensure that you know the best quality material in terms of last minute revision goes on to all of you 
so that is important so of course so who marathon sessions will be there so you don't have to worry to flush my dog to flush my dog right to flush my dog and here what are you are able to see when we are talking about to flush my dog what is the important aspect that you are able to cover from this particular work what is the important lecture uh, what is the important story that is coming over here you are able to see that you know uh, the the dog the lap dog that she had she is able to depict love right uh, so do remember that you know writers also had their canine companions a lot of these actors for example you must have seen salman khan and his dogs or a lot of these actors keep on bringing their dogs and cats alia bhat and her cats right they are the canine companions that these people are having right so uh, so that is important all right so so that that's of course like you know something that that you have to keep in mind so flush is the dog flush is the lap dog about which you are able to see the deserted garden now everyone knows about the fact that the deserted village is written by oliver goldsmith oliver goldsmith is writing deserted village but what about the deserted garden they can give you a question like this the deserted garden the deserted garden is a lesser known poem of elizabeth barrett browning please remember that don't just think that they can give you they also play with the names they also love to play with the name so they know that everyone knows about deserted village that deserted village is talking about the uh, enclosures and the migration of the human population but what about the deserted garden what about the deserted garden okay so please remember that that the deserted garden is a work this question can come directly also the deserted garden is a poem written by elizabeth barrett browning which is very rich in imagery this is also trying to tell you that you know later on these victorian writers were also really concerned about symbolism per se they were also concerned about symbolism per se all right that is something that you are able to see ezra pound a very very important modernist writer an extremely important modernist poem uh, poet the writer or the pioneer of imagism the writer or the pioneer of imagism he is writing in a station of the metro in a station of the metro right it is an quintessential images poem that we are having it is trying to what is imagism you are using you are using minimal words to present your opinion brevity is something which is important for you you are using minimal words to present your opinions as such right you are trying to be uh, eloquent you you are just not trying to be uh, verbose in a way you are not trying to be showing these word power knowledge that you are having so imagism ezra pound in a station of the metro beautifully capturing his entire experience beautifully capturing his entire experience that is clearly visible right so what we are able to see in a station of the metro in a station of the metro is trying to use minimal language to describe his experience that you know you are able to see these multiple people who are there and you are not able to remember their faces you are not able to remember their faces because they are crowd they are crowd they are crowd to you beautiful lines the apparition of these faces in the crowd petals on a wet black bow the apparition apparition is just like you know you're able to see an image of them just like you see an apparition of the ghost you're not able to see the ghost uh, perpetually you're just able to see an apparition that is the reason it's considered to be hallucination basically so the apparition an immediate show an immediate uh, flash of these faces in the crowd petals on a wet black bow petals on a wet black bow okay so please do keep these aspects properly in mind do remember that all right these are all crucial things these are all crucial aspects uh, we wouldn't really um, like you know i will of course there are some other poems that i have added in the pdf you can take a look at them if you wish to i will share the pdf with all of you but i don't want to give you a lot of things also because i know that we've covered lot many poems some of them uh, and some more are definitely left a lot of them are also left but do remember each and every poet that we've actually looked at is actually representing an important uh, area or an important movement so to say which can be questioned which can be asked in your exams that you should be prepared about okay uh, i'll be here for a minute if you having any doubts you can let me know because i know that you know today uh, uh, pooja just uh, pyal just uh, refresh your page because i think there's no buffering here i don't know about the classroom platform i'll just check no there's no buffering here as well 
very good tensing savita bilavat excellent i know that you know today's lecture was like a monologue with a less of interaction from your end uh, but that is also because it had to be like you know we wanted to give a lot of content to all of you um yeah pooja pooja's right there's no uh, disturbance as such okay just keep your momentum high and going don't worry too much there are multiple sessions lined up for all of you so today uh, if you you guys are studying nothing for example like you know you you literally got enrolled in no classes or you're not studying uh, yourself also for the exam so at least you can uh, take a look at the pulitzer prize winning video and try to revise certain important other pulitzer prize winning writers you can continue with that lecture also and then today these important poets that we've looked at you can take a look at them i think that will give you a lot of material for you to analyze and study you can research a little more on these writers you can research a little more on the poems that we've spoken about so that will always just definitely add a lot of value to your preparation okay and be very positive i am sure all of you if you're positive um, and you're making like you know the best of the times as it is there's nothing to do right there are no distractions you can't go out as such so uh, do remember that Yes, the bus. Of course, I will. I will. I will add more previous year's questions. Also, don't worry. Today it was the start of the week, so I thought let let's just stick to the topic as much as possible. We will, of course, be practicing many many previous year's questions. Don't worry. Rather, in the uh, this coming week, we will also keep a session wherein we look at your twenty twenty question paper. Considering many of you had written about uh, solving the twenty twenty question paper, also right. All right, great. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, Akashan, don't worry. Literary criticism also, we'll be sharing some stuff and some material for all of you, so you don't really have to worry a lot about literary criticism also. Okay, take good care of yourself and please study very hard. I'm sure all of you will be uh, like you know super successful in this attempt itself if you're uh, properly working hard with consistency and take care of your health also. God bless and I will see you guys tomorrow. And I will certainly share another video. Uh, so there'll be two videos on a regular basis now. So one shorter and the other a little larger in a live session. Okay. Uh, so that is there. Tenzing, no. Uh, the first officially appointed poet laureate, of course, uh, Skelton is considered to be uh, like a national poet, so to say. But the first officially appointed poet laureate is John Dryden. If it comes in your exam, okay. Take good care. God bless. Bye.